This is Twit. Raphael, let me just turn this over to you. Show us the steps that you would go through in order to launch an attack using your framework. Okay, sure. So we're going to use Armitage, which is my user interface, but the Metasploit framework, which of course is uh, maintained mostly by Rapid7 and the Metasploit framework community. I have to emphasize that because they're my friends. So, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's go ahead and uh, turn on the screen sharing. There we go. And we're going to start out with what I like to call hacking circa 2003, okay? And this is the process a lot of folks um, are familiar with right now. And what we're going to do is using Armitage, we're going to kick off an Nmap scan against a target, which is going to tell us uh, which services are open on the host that we scan. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the IP address of my target, press OK. And what you can see is that Armitage has opened up a tab and it's run the Metasplay Framework's DB Nmap command. And just as quick as that, although it's not normally all that fast, um, we have a scan of a what looks like a Windows XP system. Hmm, fascinating. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on this host, go to services, and we can see that there are three services um, open on this host. Now, if I'm experienced, I could just search for which exploit I might want to run and drag it onto this host and run it. But if I don't know which exploit to use, and for those unfamiliar, an exploit is a piece of software that takes advantage of a vulnerability in another piece of software to get you code execution. So if I don't know which exploit to use, I can go to attacks, find attacks, and Armitage will go through all of the Metasploit Framework's exploits, and it will build up a custom attack tree for each host based on its operating system, and open service information. And this will allow us to actually narrow down our search for which uh, exploit to try. So if I right click and I go to attack, you can see I have one, two, three, um, eight total exploits, which is quite a reduction from the thousand plus exploits that come with the Metasploit framework now. So I'm going to go ahead and select MS0867 Net API, which is the quintessential demo exploit in the Metasploit framework. It's very, very reliable against an unpatched Windows XP system. I'm going to press launch, and Armitage is going to open up a tab and execute the Metasploit framework commands as if I type them myself. And if we're successful, we get lightning bolts. When you see a host turn red with lightning bolts in Armitage, that means the system is compromised. OK? So if we can go ahead and show the uh, whole screen again, thank you. You can see that the host is compromised. And if I right click, I have a new menu there. Uh, the menu is for Meterpreter, which is a remote administration tool built into the Metasploit framework. It's very, very powerful. And I'm going to go ahead and select, let's see, I can go to a command shell. And Armitage is going to open up a tab uh, with a command shell on the system. And I can now type commands on that system as if I were sitting there. I can also, let's see, a right click, interpreter, explore screenshot, and I can grab a screenshot, see what the user's doing. Okay, in this case, just a happy Windows XP system. I can also, let's see, I can go shopping and browse the file system if I like, and see if anything catches my interest and uh, grab it, which is important, important for demonstrating that business risk. Um, something else I can do, if I go to access dump hashes LSAS method, I can get back um, the users who have accounts on that system and their encrypted passwords. Um, but more significantly, if I go to interpreter access dump hashes W digest, this will run a tool called Mimikatz, which is built into the Metasploit framework now. And Mimikatz allows me to get back the plain text password of any user who has interactively logged into the system since last reboot. <laughs> and this is important because once I have user's password, I can leverage that to try to get into their email or any kind of internal system that they might have access to, okay? So that's a little bit of a demonstration of 
Armitage. Now I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go into Cobalt Strike and take you into a little bit more of a modern hacking context. So I'm going to close Armitage down. And let me just go ahead and start up Cobalt Strike here. And Cobalt Strike's product that I develop. And just give it a minute to start up. Now, I should mention that sure. the, the tools that you're showing us, these aren't new. I mean, people have been using Nmap forever that to, to enumerate the ports that are open, the services that are available. You've just put everything into one nice, neat interface. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to put it. So the Metasploit framework is an awesome integration point for offensive capabilities. And that's what Metasploit gives us. It gives us the integration point, but it doesn't give us a workflow. So I wrote Armitage to help fill in that gap. And one of the uh, emails, complaints I get regularly about Armitage, though, is people say, Raph, I love Armitage. I ran an Nmap scan. I tried every exploit. I can't get into my Windows 7 system. I'll be like, well, running a remote exploit, a remote memory corruption exploit, is not how enterprises are attacked today. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different. So I'm going to take you through... Kind of a quick demo of that. Let's do that. So we can go back. Yeah, let's do it. So the way modern systems are attacked is through what we call a client-side attack. A client-side attack is an exploit against an application used to view attacker-controlled content. So I'm going to start up a web drive-by attack. Um, we're going to start up Cobalt Strike's smart applet attack. And what this attack does is it comes pre-bundled with several metas or excuse me, several rewritten Java exploits to help them get past antivirus. And when it runs, it will actually try to disable the security sandbox and run my code as the attacker. So now that I've got a malicious applet on the web somewhere, I now need to clone a website and embed this applet into it, um, something to make it match my pretext. So let's go to attacks web drive by clone site. And I'm going to clone uh, twit.tv. And I'm going to select this uh, smart applet attack. And, and let's go ahead and hit clone. And now I need to get my target to visit this website. One way I could get people to this website is I could say, hey, check out, I could post on Facebook or Twitter and say, hey, go to this website and check me out. I'm on uh, This Week in Enterprise Tech today. And if somebody clicks on that link, they're going to see um, what looks like the This Week in uh, Tech website, you know, net, netcast from people you trust. <laughs> and Trust us. Here I, exactly, <laughs> trust us, especially today, right? And if all goes well, we get lightning bolts. Remember, get lightning bolts, you're in. And we can see now that instead of a Windows XP system, we've just compromised a Windows 7 system, okay? And just like before, I'm going to grab a screenshot and let's see what the user's up to. And you can see they're looking at the This Week in Tech website, uh, the one that executed our evil applet. Now, I'm going to show you something, uh, Padre, I haven't shown anybody else. So I'm going to give a special preview to the This Week in Enterprise Tech website of something that's coming out in one week. Ooh, okay. Yes, we like this. Ooh, see, yes, this yes. is fun. Okay, so my philosophy on hacking, I see exploits as useful tools to get a foothold, okay? But hacking is not the discovery and exploitation of vulnerabilities. Hacking, in my mind, is getting into a position where I can steal a user's identity and leverage that identity to get at the data that I'm after, okay? So with that in mind, I'd like to introduce you to something called browser pivoting. First things first, I'm going to go to Meterpreter Interact Desktop, and I'm going to pull up a tab with the user's desktop so we can see everything that they're doing, okay? And give it a moment because the actual uh, VNC server needs to stage in memory and connect right. and all that. So here we can see um, the user's desktop now, right? And let's wait for them to go do something we're interested in, like access their email. So here we can see conveniently, it looks like the user's going somewhere. And this is me, the attacker, watching. And oh, look, it looks like they're getting ready to log into their email. 
So I'm going to wait for the user to finish logging into their email. They don't know that we're on the system, that we're watching them. And they're going to hit sign in. And oh, snap, look at that. They're using two-factor authentication. Does that mean we, the attacker, are stopped? Does that mean we're out of the game? No. <laughs> Sad, sadly, no. <laughs> and it's always very important to assume that if an attacker can get onto a system, they can do anything the user can. So the user um, just got their authentication code, and they're going to uh, log in, assuming they typed their password correctly. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Well, give it a moment. Let's see. Oh, look, we're good. By we, I mean <clears throat> right, the victim right. is good. Some, right? Whoever that is. That whoever. Mm -hmm. So we can see the user is in their email now, right? So what do we do as the attacker? Well, here's a tool I've been working on, and it's called browser pivoting. I'm going to right-click on this host, go to Interpreter, Explore, Browser Pivot. And I'm going to inject myself as the attacker into the target's um, Internet Explorer. And let's see here. I'm going to inject into, let's see here, not that one. I want to inject into this one. So let's go ahead and launch. And what this is going to do, it's going to create a proxy server that I, the attacker, can go through tunneled through my remote administration tool. And this is going to allow me to access anything that the user's logged into. So if I go to, for example, Yahoo Mail in my browser as the attacker, oh, look, I'm in the user's email. Now, and I can let's make it clear. This is not an RDP exploit. You're actually using the browser process. Yeah, I'm in their browser. I'm in my browser on my attacker system. Now I'm able to go through this web application that the user authenticated to without them knowing. I'm actually just in the convenience of my own browser going shopping. <laughs> on their browser. <laughs> on their browser. Yeah, I'm making their browser fulfill requests for me. And this is a red teaming tool. The purpose is to demonstrate that I as an attacker can get at something that's meaningful to the business or leverage it to get closer to my goal. Maybe I could use the user's email to send another spear phishing attack to get at somebody else I want to get to, maybe their boss or somebody who's got access to the data that I want.